YouTube viewers and booktube viewers welcome to my channel Michael Romeo talks books and I'm Michael Romeo and I do the talking about the books and why do I talk about books I'll say it again books are awesome books are wonderful books are exciting books are journeys into other places they're 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 breathing I, day without a book is like a day without breathing as far as I'm concerned and it's just a wonderful day to be out on my deck doing this bit of content got a couple of the kids out here on the deck with me because they're being nice and quiet shut a couple up in the house because they were being really distracting and I wasn't able to get any filming done uh, but you may hear them in the background saying why aren't I outside too um, but, um, what are we doing today? We're doing my March wrap-up, and, um, uh, no, not my March wrap-up. March just started. We're doing my February wrap-up and my March TBR. There we go. I got it in order. Excuse me while I reach down here and get it. Okay. So. February wrap-up. I had a not-so-bad month. Um, wasn't awesome. It wasn't, wasn't a home run. But, um, um, but there was some good stuff on it. And some stuff that's trickling over into March because I just haven't had a chance to finish it. Um, but we started off the month with P.S. Your Cat is Dead by James Kirkwood, which was a reread of a book that I read back when I was my late teens, early 20s, somewhere around there. A book that came out in 1972. And we, um, excuse me, I was just reaching for my drink and knocked it over. Um, excuse me, got to dry mouth. Okay, here we go. Came out in 1972, was well received, got great reviews uh, from critics and and um, uh, peers alike. There was some great peer reviews on the book. Um, a story about a man whose life is just having a bad day for a long time. Uh, his best friend has died and. Um, he's lost his most current acting job and his girlfriend has left him and his house has been burgled and his house has been burgled again. And he is home one day when he realizes somebody is coming in to burgle the house yet a third time and he hides and manages to, in a moment of great heroic work, um, capture the burglar by bonging him on the bean and tying him up. And uh, from that point on, the book is a no holes barred. Just, uh, oh, it's just one thing after another. <laughs> one thing after another. And some of it, you, you're face palming and laughing at the same time because of just the stuff that's happening. Uh, the conversation between him and the tied-up burglar is um, is quite compelling. Um, they 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 are reluctant friends, shall we say? Uh, they they both have had lives, and when they start sharing, as people do, um, much to our hero's chagrin, he actually starts liking the guy. Um, and, uh, it seems to be vice versa as well, but, uh, yeah, great book. I thoroughly enjoyed it again. Um, it had been long enough since I'd read it that I'd forgotten a lot about it. And in fact, I even wondered at one point if what I had read was the play, because at the same time that it was released as a novel, it was released as a play. And, um, I was reading plays at that time of my life because I was really into them. And, um, what you doing? Um, 
And uh, there just seemed to be so much more to what I was reading this time than I remembered, which would make sense if um, I had read the play before. But either way, highly recommend 1972's P.S. Your Cat is Dead. Um, definitely, if you want a light, enjoyable, fun read, th this is a book for you. Um, followed that up with a rather difficult book, and it was a buddy read. Um, Jolene at Bookworm Adventure Girl and I uh, teamed up to buddy read this one, and um, she was much more ambitious than I was on this, and that this book is called The Hours by Michael Cunningham. And um, it's based on, and actually a retelling of, Mrs. Dalloway by um, Virginia Woolf. And um, she actually went and read Mrs. Dalloway at the same time, you know, that we're doing the buddy read. And I uh, got the background on it so she could do the comparison and um, get more out of it. I wasn't that ambitious, especially since I wasn't enjoying the book to begin with. Um, it was a difficult book for me to read in that it was written in um, third person present, which I always have difficulty reading. I just don't connect with the characters and with what's going on when a book is written in that tense. And I, it's just, it's me. It's not the writers. It's not anything else. It's me that just doesn't like that way of telling a story. Um, Add to that that I really didn't care much about the characters at all. And I have to, I don't have to care about characters to enjoy a book, but I have to find them at least interesting. Um, they can be really bad, horrible people, but if I find them interesting in their horribleness, then I'll enjoy the book. Um, but these people were just dull. They were very dull. And if the point of the book was that the most majority of people around here, around us, lead dull lives, then, then yeah, I guess the boy, the book made its point. Um, but one of my reading projects is to read all the Pulitzer Prize winners for fiction, and I was able to check this one off because it was a Pulitzer Prize winner for fiction. So like it or not, I was able to go tick that one off. Um, but The Hours by Michael Cunningham, um, I don't know, I've heard other people talk about how much they love it, how beautifully it's written, and, but it just, there, there was no connection for me. Um, so, um, do I recommend it? Um, I wouldn't not recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it to many people. Um, but definitely if you are into... Um, character studies of the mundane sort of people, life, then by all means, read it. Um, and I'm not, not, not being sarcastic there. I mean, you know, that there, I, I have read books about very mundane people, but the author made them interesting, and I just didn't feel like Michael Cunningham made these particular mundane characters interesting in any way. So, uh, I take that back. There were two characters that I, I, I found interesting. Um, uh, they, they, that, that was it. I mean, I can't tell you anything about them without giving you spoilers. So, <laughs> um, so moving on. Uh, as you know, if you've seen any videos, I talk about it often. Uh, my wife and I read to each other, and we enjoy reading to each other. Uh, and right now, reading to each other, we're working our way through a murder mystery series, uh, the Ian Rutledge series by Charles Todd, which is a, um, a British series written by American authors. Um, very, very well done. And we finished book number 17, A Fine Summer's Day, uh, by Charles Todd. Charles Todd is a mother and son writing team, or has been a mother and son writing team. 
uh, earlier last year, um, the mother died. And um, I know some more books have come out since then on another series that they wrote together. So I'm making the assumption that the son is continuing the writing of the series and will probably write more of the Ian Rutledge series. Um, but the Ian Rutledge series basically takes place right after World War One, and I mean right after World War One. Uh, the first book, um, Ian Rutledge has been home from the war. He fought in, in, in France in the Somme and comes back with shell shock, or what we call nowadays post-traumatic stress disorder. And uh, after some treatment in a, in a hospital under a doctor that specializes in it, he, uh, he goes back to work, his job at Scotland Yard, and hence the series. Um, and it's, he went back too early. Let's just say he needed more rest. Um, and the post-traumatic stress disorder just um, it crops up, it gets worse. It's, it's a character of its own in the book. Um, and that is, you know, how every great mur murder mystery series, the detective or the sleuth or whatever, has a um, has something. Whether they're an alcoholic or a drug addict or um, they have phobias or, you know, whatever. They've got something that they've got to battle in order to get their job done. Well, with him, it's the post-traumatic stress disorder. And remember, back then, back in the late, back in the early 1900s, the 1900s? Yeah, early 1900s. I'm getting my numbers mixed up here. Um, this is 1918, I believe, that it starts. Um, to come back with shell shock from the war labeled you a coward and was a bad thing. So you didn't let it show if you could. You kept it bottled up. You just... You know, you dealt with it. And of course, as anybody who's dealt with any kind of mental illness, whether it's depression or anxiety or post-traumatic stress disorder, um, you learn that if you bottle it up, and I'm talking firsthand here, if you bottle it up, it just gets worse. So in these books, as the series goes along, it does. It gets worse. And it is a compelling read. This book, A Fine Summer's Day, um, takes us back to before the war, which was a bit of a, an upheaval. Um, but it actually takes us up to the very beginning of the war. This starts before the war, comes up to the beginning of the war, when everybody's enlisting and heading off, including our hero, Ian Rutledge, after he solves the mystery. Um, so it was a good book. I liked it. Um, I don't know if it would be um, efficacious to read it first because of the fact that um, you get a lot of backstory for the rest of the series. It may or may not. I'm not sure. Um, somebody out there, do that. Read this one first and then read the rest of the series. Let me know. Um... But either way, it's a good book. Very good book. One of his best. Um, and then I also read The Song Is You by Megan Abbott. Uh, Megan Abbott is an author that I latched onto with a book called um, Die a Little. And it was a wonderful book. I had it on audiobook. I've listened to it at least three times. I loved it. And uh, ran on to read another one of her books called Queen Pin, which was a riveting page turner of a book. Um, and I forget the name of the next one I read. Bury Me, Don't Bury Me, Bury Me Not, something like that. Um, and that one was a disappointment. It wasn't as good as the other two. So now we've got The Song Is You, and it's about a missing person, an actress who's missing, and all that's found of her is her purse, and she was last seen among the company of some really dark characters. 
Um, it's a step up from the Berry book, but still, it's not Queen Pin and it's not Die a Little. Um, but it's it's a good read. It's a good light read if you want something that's just a break between other others heavy reading stuff. Uh, it's a good good light, you know, cleanse the brain type book. Meanwhile, I've been listening to Spear by Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, and um, I've been listening to that audio book as I drive to and from work and run errands and stuff, and it's okay. It's got some very good moments, very interesting moments. It's also got some very tedious moments. I do have to say, and I'm saying this with utter sarcasm, that um, I really did get tired of hearing about his military exploits and his frostbitten penis. Uh, two topics that he just seemed to, he couldn't let go. So, uh, but there were some very interesting parts in it. Um, it's hard when you have somebody who is as privileged and and um, just, just just raised it in a whole different way than you or I can even imagine. And you know, I understand everybody has their problems, everybody has their troubles, and uh, he, his problems with the paparazzi and the journalist I definitely can get I get that totally I 100% 100% understand that I understand the 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 grief over the death of his mother and the trauma that that caused him as a child and how he dealt with it as an adult get it but there are some things that I found him complaining about that was just oh really I'm looking how to pay the electric bill this month. And that's the best thing you've got to worry about over there? Is that thing? Um, so there were a few moments like that in the book. Um, but it's an okay read. It's, it's, if you're interested in the royal family at all, um, it, it's a worthwhile read, or listen in this case. Uh, he reads the audiobook himself. Um, so you, you do get his... Um, direct input into the book, into the story. Now I've got two books that are straggling into the new month because I haven't had a chance to finish them. One of them was recommended by uh, Fiber Artsy, and I'll link her down below so you can um, check her out. She's got a great channel. She uh, mixes uh, reading with yarn and knitting and all that stuff which I do too um, I love to crochet I love to knit and, and I love to read so she and I if we ever got together over a cup of tea we'd probably strike up with a really good friendship um, but this book is called Maynard's House by Herman Rauscher uh, first book I've read by this person never heard of him before it's a well written book um she referred to it as a light horror, and I have to agree with that. So far, where I'm at, I'm about halfway through. Uh, I have to agree that light horror is a good designation for it. it it's um, it has to deal with the supernatural, um, and but it hasn't. There's been no scares yet. There's been a little bit of eeriness and creepiness, but that's about it. Um. But the writer is a good writer, and um, he really does help you connect with the main character uh, as as he inherits this house from his old Vietnam buddy. Um, they are both in Vietnam together, and the book is set in the early 70s, uh, so it's like right he's right out of Vietnam. Uh, he's about 23 years old, I think, and um, getting off the boat or the plane or whatever in San Francisco, he makes the decision to just go straight to Maine and find this house that his war buddy left to him in his will, because the buddy doesn't make it, obviously. Otherwise, he wouldn't have the house. Um, and he manages to go 
to the house. He met, he reaches it in the midst of a blizzard. Um, and it, it's quite a house. It, it's the explanation of it, the um, description, the um, it's well done. The characters are very vivid. And uh, so, like I said, so far it's a good book. It's not scary, but it's a good book. Um, light horror is, is a good description for it. Uh, also, my wife and I are continuing on reading to each other from the next Charles Todd book uh, called No Shred of Evidence. And this one is turning out to be my favorite in the series so far because it's just a great premise. Um, one person witnesses something and a, makes the assumption make, makes an assumption from it that somebody is being murdered meanwhile the accused and there are four of them tell their side of the story and both of them are equally plausible so which one do you believe which one do you go with well, you need to go and find evidence one way or the other. And the evidence so far, and I'm halfway through this one too, is um, more than lacking. Um, there's definitely evidence that foul play was at hand, but the guy that saw what he thinks he saw, were they trying to murder the guy or were they trying to save the guy? And that's the mystery. And it's very well played out in no shred of evidence. So that's my February wrap up. Now we come to March. And we all know what March is, right? We got the March of the Mammoths. You all know what that is, right? March of the Mammoths. It is an event curated by old blue chapter and verse and I'll put a link down for that channel down below in which we are challenged to read a book of no less than 800 pages 800 pages or more guys and I could get away with it by doing a book that's 802 pages or something like that but no why why do that when I can take a book that is not one but two volumes. Why, why make it easy? So volume two has the total page count. And if I remember, I think it's 1135. Yes, 1,135 pages for this gem. Hari Sundown by K.B. Gilden. Um, this also works into one of my reading projects of reading books that I remember being on my mother's bookshelf. And um, this is one I remember being, and I, was, I remember it so vividly because of the cover art. I was always fascinated by that cover art for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, it's a sunset uh, on a furrowed field with barbed wire. And I just always loved that cover. And um, I have seen the movie they made from this. Uh, the movie was like three and a half hours long, if I'm not mistaken. A great cast, starring Jane Fonda and um, Philip Law and uh, some, some other great actors from the 60s. Um, but never read the book. Um, I don't remember a whole lot about the movie. I was very young when I watched it on television. Um, but I am looking forward to, to reading the book. As a matter of fact, I am starting it today because it's March 1st. I figure if I read 36 pages a day, I will get through this book by the end of the month. Now, they also say, for those of you not familiar with March of the Mammoths, um, the thing is to start the book in the month of March. If you don't finish it in the month of March, it's not a big issue. It's more getting you to read a chunker. Um, 
believe it or not, there are people out there that are intimidated by big books. I'm not one of them. Um, so the event, this event is not actually aimed at somebody like me who loves to read thick books. I do love to read thick books. I love to get lost for days with this same group of people and their escapades and their trials and tribulations and their joys and oh god awesome um but if you are somebody who's intimidated by a thick book just start one pick one and start it uh and um hint out to somebody out there and i think she knows who she is if she's watching um 400 and 500 pages is not a chunker. Just saying. That's an average book. Um, so you need to uh, join us here on March of the Mammoths. If you're watching, you know who you are. Um, so, yes, I am definitely, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to have a blast. Um, think of my mother while I'm doing it. And... That's it. That's my um, that's my March TBR. Uh, it's a possibility that I will finish this, but I am a slow reader. So you guys know that I'm a slow reader. So there's a possibility that I may have some time at the end of the month to read something else, and if I do, I will. But I'm not counting on it. Um, this may take me the whole month to read, and I'm looking forward to it. So. That is my February wrap up in my March TBR. Oops, and there goes my notebook. Um, and that's about it. So I hate to say goodbye. I feel like a cow, cow Burnett. I should be singing. I'm so glad we had this time together. Um, but <laughs> just to forget I did that. Um, uh, I do love this, this time I spent it. I'm at 27 minutes already, and that's a long one for me, guys. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like to watch videos that are too long, so I'm going to stop here and say goodbye. And, um, I hope you all have, have a great first day of March. Talk to y'all later. Bye.